So an important concept um, is um, that of single and multi-body parts within Design Modeler. So by default, Design Modeler place each, each body into um, uh, one part by itself. Um, so if we have a single body parts, we have individual, individual parts that are meshed separately. So the example here on the top right is of two parts and two bodies. So we have two solids, and which, are list, which both have the same name here, solid and solid, one being unfrozen and the lower one being frozen. Each of them are in separate parts. And what this means is that neither of these um, solids um, see each other because they're in separate parts. Now if we were to place each of these, e these bodies into a single part, then these would then be able to see each other. And this means that we can then um, perform um, a, a Boolean in printing or, or share topology so they can then begin to share the lower topology um, uh, with each other so that effectively then we were allowed to form a, a conformal interface. Without the sharing of topology and in separate parts uh, we would automatically create a non-conformal mesh at the interface. It's important to note that even though two bodies may be in the, in the same part um, in order to, to, conform, to create a conformal mesh at the interface, the, we must have surfaces that are coincident with each other or are within the tolerance in order for shared to topology to be successful so they can each share uh, an intermediate uh, lower topology. Um, but we'll see some examples of the effects of sharing meshes at the interface as a result of uh, um, a, a separate um, part or as a, as a multi-body part. And the uh, multi-part, um, multi-body parts can be generated in, in different ways. We can um, simply um, you select and control select or shift select to select all of these um, bodies, then simply right click and select form new part. And that will create this small icon that's shown here with these small three small cubes, and we'll list it as part. And all of the bodies um, that form uh, that make up that part, that multi-body part will then be listed um, underneath that part. Um, regardless of the number of bodies here, it always um, displays this icon of these three cubes. So whether there's two or 10 bodies that make up this part, um, this is a default generic icon for a multi-body part. Uh, and the other option is to select the bodies and then go to tools and form new part. But uh, for, for all intents and purposes, it, it's, it's, it's easier to, just to manually select the, the bodies in the tree and then right click and um, select form new part. So here's some examples of um, separate parts as opposed to multi-body parts. So in the first case here in DM, we have um, one part and one body consisting of one solid. Okay, so we only have um, one body here so the result of transferring the geometry to meshing is that we have just this one body. Um, so this means that the mesh is um, conformal all the way through. And we can see in the example after we've generated the mesh that because this is all one solid, uh, the mesh continues all the way through. So at the edge positions, you can see on this feature edge, we've got all of the node positions here, which match up between all of these two particular, um, all of these regions and these two particular faces. So, so it's, uh, the mesh is conformal all the way through. But that's because we have one body and uh, we don't have uh, separate bodies. It's not split up into separate bodies. The next example here in DM is three parts and three bodies. So this um, block on this side, the main block and the cylinder are all separate um, parts and also separate bodies. This means that they don't see each other and, they, and effectively they're treated independently. So what happens is when we create a mesh on each of these um, bodies, this means that the meshes are non-conformal. So there's no sharing of nodes at the interface and that can be seen on the right hand image here. Now what uh, meshing will do is once we, it, once we take this into meshing as three separate parts, because there's no um, sharing of topology here because we're not in a multi-body part, um, it will automatically find that these two faces are within uh, a contact tolerance of each other and try to create what are called contact regions and our contact regions will automatically be, formed, be, be created when we take it into meshing by virtue of the tolerance of the, um, the, the proximity of the faces. So here we can see we have a contact group that's created and two contact regions. So we have a contact region between um, the, la the, face of the la large face of the large block and the small face of the smaller block and also um, the right hand um, square face of the large block 
and the um, circular face of the end of the cylinder. And these are the two contact regions that were generated. Now, you may actually want uh, a non-conformal to be there to allow, um, for example, fluid to pass across these regions, or you may not want them to be there um, for, for, for another region, in which case we can, we can delete these contact regions. Uh, but this is simply showing uh, the fact that if they're in separate parts, then there won't be any imprinting or sharing of topology, and these uh, meshes will be uh, non-conformal. And the next option is to have one multi-body part and three bodies or solids within the same part. So now, although we have what appear to be three, um, three regions here, which are three, three, three bodies, that it's actually one part. And this means that once we um, take it into the meshing, um, share and sharing of topology is automatically invoked when you take it into the meshing, um, so that there's an imprint operation and we're actually sharing the um, lower topology intermediate face between um, the adjacent bodies within the single part. So now, when we perform the meshing, we have sharing of nodes at the interface, as can be shown on the right-hand side here. In the contacts region, there are no contacts created because none of the faces are within a proximity of each other to allow contacts to be generated because it's automatically coincident and sharing of topology. So we don't have any contact regions created. Contacts is listed here, but there are no contact entities listed underneath um, which um, indicate that there would be a contact zone created. Um, so we can see that it's um, now fully conformal. So I mentioned about sharing of topology, and we can see here the example of um, sharing of a, a topology for a multi-body part. Essentially, this allows the um, in, imprinting of one um, body onto another body, but this will only be done if the, share, if, if the bodies are all within the same uh, multi-body part. So here we can see an example on, the, on, these, um, um, on these two particular um, bodies. We can see it before sharing of topology and after sharing topology. And we can see here the connectivity on this um, purple edge, uh, showing that it's actually being used for multiple um, faces because of the sharing of topology. Because that small face is then now shared not, it's, it's used not only by the body on the right hand side, but it's also used um, as a basis for the body on the left hand side. We can also, as an option, perform um, imprinting as well. And we can see the imprint that's performed um, after a sharing of topology on the bottom right hand side uh, of imprinting this, um, this body on the right onto the, um, the larger um, body on the left. Imprinting can be useful in order to um, define name selections. Um, so what we can do is, if we wanted to, to create this as a boundary zone, uh, as a new um, zone for region for a name selection, we can perform the shared topology operation and then identify this particular face as a name selection simply by selecting the face, right-clicking, and uh, selecting um, name selection and defining the name selection so that we can use it in the, uh, the forthcoming simulation.